What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Horror Nights Unscripted, a podcast dedicated to all things Halloween Horror Nights related in an unscripted and unique way. But in our case, now we're talking about all haunts. So, yeah, my name is Scott from SoCal Exploring. I'm Michael from Hollow Thrills. I'm Adrian from Lost TV. And you already know it's your favorite Horror Nights trio. You know how we do out here. You know, Absolutely. we out here. We kill in the game. Today we got a fun episode, but before we bring our guest on, we're going to promote our socials so he doesn't have to sit through it and be annoyed by it. So, take us away with those Instagrams, Losh. Me? Yes. All right. So, like last time, you can find Scott at Soul Cow Exploring Media. That's all across the board, except for I think on Twitter. We talked about it before. Yeah, but you'll find it either way. Like, it's Soul Cow Exploring Media. Come on, guys. Come on. Then you got Michael down there at Hell Thrills all across the board. And then I'm the idiot that didn't set it up right. So it's <laughs> Lush TV on Instagram and King Lush on Twitter. Are you able to change it or is it like taken? Yeah, you, you can't change it on Twitter. Really? Yeah, I don't think you can change your um your at. No, you, you can't. Someone's gonna comment down in the section like, actually, if you do this, <laughs> that's all we need. Someone tell us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and we are all rocking our merch today. Um, Lush has got that Hornets and Scripted merch. Michael's got the Hollow Thrills merch. I got my SoCal t-shirt, the Ghost Edition. The Hornets and Scripted shirt that Lush is wearing right now is uh, in regards to our guest today, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so you can find all of our merchandise shops down below. Congrats to Michael's winner, um, Hornets or L or RL fan for winning his giveaway. They'll be getting a Hollow Thrills t-shirt, which is really cool, and, and a mask too, right? Um, mask, sticker, and a secret HHN item. There you go. So uh, keep an eye out for all of our socials like Lost Shed because we'll be doing giveaways here and there. We've been doing lots of giveaways and I plan to do more. But Michael, take it away. How can they find us on YouTube? So they can find all of us on YouTube. Uh, they can find Scott at uh, SoCal Exploring. They can find Lost at Lost TV, uh, YouTube.com backslash C backslash Lash TV, <laughs> and then they can also find me at the previous part YouTube and sla- slash C slash Hello all Thrills. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all complicated, but that's why we encourage you to go down in the description below and click on whatever link you want to go because it's all down there. But without further ado, let's jump right into the episode and bring on our guest. We're back, everybody, um, with our guest today. So, uh, without further ado, please welcome everybody to the show. Horror Nights updates the mastermind behind all the crazy merch. So, welcome, David. Hey, guys. <laughs> so, we're here to talk about um, all of his fun merch. Because if a little backstory, actually, I'll give I'll I'll give you the floor, uh, David. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, yeah, so I run a Instagram and Twitter called HHN Updates. Um, it's something I kind of created on a whim, and it's been doing really well since. Um, I'm obsessed with Halloween Horror Nights, as all of us are. <laughs> uh, the way to kind of uh, show that love for the event um, in a creative way. Yeah. Now, now, did you did you paint that yourself behind you? Or was that just gifted you? No, it's a it's a backdrop. Amazon, Amazon.com. Everybody. Oh, that's a that's a backdrop. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Though. Oh my god. <laughs> no, that looks so sick. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's that... actually from the um, from the Singapore event. Their their um, show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, I just so, got a text. Are... <laughs> so when are we? Uh... When are we all going out to Singapore? Yeah, yeah I know, right? Going out for their event <laughs> this year. <laughs> right? We all got We all just got to go fly out there since it's only Horror Nights running. <laughs> and I was looking at the flight; it's like six hundred dollars. Really? Yes. I'm like, I can't do that right now. <laughs> I guess it costs a lot to freaking fly overseas. Yeah. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to, like, if we do fly overseas to get yeah. back. Yeah. Once we get back, we're just stuck in. Yeah. <laughs> You're just stuck there forever. <laughs> That's the thing. It's easy to get out. But getting back is the hard part. <laughs> Especially. Uh, so, David, uh, you recently launched, and we'll get into the merch in a little bit, but you launched this one-of-a-kind Horror Nights unscripted like Loot Crate box, which is a monthly subscription box. It, I don't think anyone else has done that, right? Nobody else has done that yet, right? I don't think they have. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you guys laughing about, huh? 
Uh, you said the wrong thing. What did I say? You said Horror Nights unscripted box. Did I? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It's well. Horror Nights crate. I don't know. I'm just so used to. Okay, my bad. My bad. That's why we're unscripted. Okay, <clears throat> take two. On a roll, you know. I was like, me, me and Adrian immediately caught it. No, I <laughs> we thought looked that, at each other and we we're like, I thought that my voice like went deep again because sometimes my voice is going deep. So I was like, shit. <laughs> it's, it's constant puberty for Scott, guys. Constant yeah, puberty. exactly. Like I just have puberty where my voice goes extremely deep. <laughs> it's not the audio settings or anything. But okay, okay. Horror Nights Crate is the right name, right? Halloween Horror Crate. Halloween Horror Crate. Damn it. <laughs> well, you know. Anyway, so it is a monthly subscription box of sorts. And I'll let you uh, share share the details with us, David. Yeah, so it's a six-month subscription. So we're having, we call them like six episodes of the boxes. And each box kind of um, has the different aspect of the event in it. So our first box is actually the icons, the main four icons, um, the ones that everybody knows, Jack, director, storyteller, and caretaker. Um, so the entire box is kind of geared towards them. It's heavily influenced by HHN 16, with a little nod to 25 as well. Um, but yeah, it features a ton of different things. I can't give away anything that's in the box. It's yeah. <laughs> mystery. Um, but you'll, it's like an array of things like pins, magnets. We have like this really cool plush thing and t shirts, of course. Um, and then a few boxes will have extra items added into it. So, like, one box will have a guest activated trigger in it. So uh, if you don't are not familiar with those, it's like what you when you go through the houses, there's these like random buttons that you can press and they kind of like do things like shoot water or make noise or activate a prop or something like that. Uh -huh. So we're kind of taking inspiration from that um, uh, and adding that into the box. Uh, we also let's see what else are we doing? Yeah, so like I said, there's six different iterations of the box. Um, so it ranges from icons, uh, scare zones, original properties. Uh, there's a whole box based around Cary, Ohio. Um, there's a box uh, specifically for HHN Hollywood. Oh, yeah, yeah, so it's a lot of um, <laughs> different things. Yeah, we're trying to give you variety. It's It was very heavily influenced by, back in the day, they used to do like these media boxes they would give, they would send out to mm -hmm. different um, media people and it would have like a severed head in it with like a random object or like a note that you would have to like decipher like what yeah, they, the they do that and not scare from down here where they'd like hint at what mazes were coming they'd send like media boxes it was really cool yeah yeah, yeah. so it's, exactly so i you know when i was younger i was like always obsessed with that like i want to be on media so i can get one <laughs> of those boxes you know? so now i'm like oh, i'll just i'll just make my own box <laughs> out of all the media gifts like that you've seen is there anyone that you like like the most like in the past my favorite would probably be oh my gosh there's been so many cool ones the one with the severed head and like the usb and the eyeball was pretty cool mm. um there was one where there was like a skull and you had to kind of like pull back the scalp and it had like a secret message on it oh what the hell <laughs> actually speaking of usbs there'll be a usb in the box as well and I'll have a secret message. So those who purchased the box, you were asked a couple questions um, in the beginning. So those will kind of uh, come to light when you when you get the box. It'll make sense when you get the box. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, it seems like <laughs> you have this really thought out here, uh, and I'm excited for it because if you guys don't know, this these boxes sold out on the first day. Were you expecting like you said you you launched 25 right for the first launch? Mm -hmm. Were you expecting yeah, so, to do more or were you expecting to like 25 was a good number because you didn't think you'd sell out? Well, yeah, I, I started at 25 because I was like, I don't know if people would be interested in this. You know, it's a very like niche thing. Yeah. Like, items in the box are for people that are like diehard fans. Like if you don't really know the event very well, you're not going to get some of the things that are in the box. Um, so I in my head, I was like, OK, I'll start at 25 because I'm not quite sure if this is going to really pop off and I think within a couple hours they were all gone and I was like, Oh, okay. So, <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah. So, um, the next time around we'll probably extend it a little bit. Um, I'm making everything pretty much. And so I can't go that heavy on the numbers. I still have to live 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I will, you know, I have to have time to eat and sleep and all that. But um, yeah, we also have a lot of help from other people. So Shelby Wendy Guts, um, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with her. She's contributing to the box. Uh, Christopher Ripley, he actually creates, uh, he has a book called um, Halloween Horror Nights Unofficial. And he basically talks about the history of the event. So he has a special gift in the box as well. And then we have a up and coming artist. His name is Gustavo. He's actually from Puerto Rico and he loves the event and he's going to be, yeah. Cool. So this is like a, a collaborative thing. You're... Yeah, I mean, there's there's like maybe three, four-ish items that are from third parties, but uh -huh. everything else I'm sculpting, molding, painting, everything is by hand. Yeah. So are they, are, are, is that going to be the same with every box or are you going to have collaborative stuff or is it just for the first one? Yeah. So every box is going to feature a different artist. Um, and it will be different things like from uh, prints. It could be like specialty miniatures and things um, like in the, I don't know if it's this box or the next box, but we have, um, his name is Cremated Art. He's on Instagram and he makes mm -hmm. these, uh, basically like miniatures of different things at the event. Sorry, Michael. Like and he made like the arcade shells and things like that. So I'm really excited for what he's doing. I, I got a chance to see it. And I'm, I think everybody's going to love that one. Um, he's making it exclusively for the crate. So I think that's really cool. So be, be ready for that. But yeah, every, every box will have two to three artists that are collaborating um, in on it. Uh, Christopher Ripley will be in every single box. So he'll have something to give in every box. Um, but yeah, like the, and I'm pretty sure Shelby will probably be in every box as well. Um, but for the most part, they're gonna switch out. We're giving opportunities to people that may not have opportunities to showcase their art. We really want um, everybody to get a chance to show what they're capable of and show their love for HHN just as much as we love it. We want everybody to know that there's other people out there that have the same exact passion for it. And we really, really want to celebrate that because that's, that's what this box is for the most. It's for the fans. It's for the people that love the event. It's not for the average consumer, those people that just go on vacation to Universal. It's definitely for like those diehard Or the community. That, yeah, totally. Like watching the walkthrough videos every day and going to the tribute store for the 12th time, <laughs> you know, those type of people. Those are the people yeah. that we... Yeah, those people. <laughs> yeah, that's <a> lost. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a tribute store way too many times. I haven't gone. I don't I don't live in Florida. I live oh. in California. So. Yeah, I was going to say, me and David are over here in California. <laughs> uh, so I, I want to ask you, is the box going to be... How long are you going to continue it for? Like, is it just going to be the six months or are you going to, is this going to be something that you want to take off with? So the goal is uh, for now is just the six months. Um, and then after the six month, we will kind of like come back and reevaluate, um, see if we want to do more, see if we can do more. I mean, there's so much lore in the event that we can, you know, we can like really break down to every nuance of, the event and create boxes. Um, actually, narrowing it down to six boxes was very difficult because there's just so many things to choose from. Um, but yeah, so for now, six, but in the future, you never know. My mind changes all the time. So yeah. So is it going to be like six consecutive months or is it going to be how other subscription services do it where it's like, what, like for six boxes at once every other month? No, so you're going to get six boxes. So August, September, October, November, December, January. Yeah, so it'll go all the way through with no with no breaks. So we're already, I mean, the first box hasn't even gone out yet, and I'm already working on the second box already. Mm. So I'm making sure that everything's ready to go. Like I said, I have to make everything by hand. So yeah. we have to make sure that we're getting ahead of it. So weekend and i think that's one of the cool things that i i was lucky enough to snag it as soon as you said that i was like one of the last i barely made it in um mm -hmm. as soon as you posted that you're selling out it's like well i'm gonna buy it now because I, I was gonna wait until the next day but i wanted to make sure to get the first box at least yeah now. so um yeah if you guys Super. if you guys want to check out what's in that first box i know adrian and michael didn't get it they're too late <laughs> 
So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make a full video on it, talking about it and like reviewing it. So if you guys want to see that, make sure you're subscribed. Um, you know, it's it's really cool that you're doing this because a lot of what you're doing is, is for the community, like you said. It's it's bringing people up and they're bringing their spirits up and at least giving them something. Since you know both of our events are canceled, which sucks, but uh, yeah. I think it's I think it's really cool what you're doing. And like you said, you're bringing in artists who you know some of them can't have their work featured because they don't have the biggest following or they just don't they aren't out there as much so i think it's cool that you're bringing in different artists to kind of show off their work because there's some some people with some true talent out there no definitely and that's what i'm most excited for obviously i I love creating things as well but for you guys to be able to see what is in their brains too because i kind of like i kind of give them free reign to do whatever they want for the most part i mean some people I've seen things that they've done and I'm like, oh my gosh, that has to be in the box. Yeah. Like that. So, but, um, you know, I'll give them like a quick prompt, like, oh, um, your character is this and then create um, something off of this. And one thing to know, it's very, very important, especially as a fellow artist, I everybody's getting um, compensated for their work. Nobody is doing this for free. I'm paying each and every person that's contributing to the boxes. I think that's so, so important because so many artists um, tend to do these things for free just for exposure, which is not something that you should do. Like you, your worth is worth something. Yeah. It's being compensated and feeling like they're getting something out of it. Um, it's, it's to me, it's like anything that I make or create or sell, it's never about the profit for me. It's never, ever, ever about that. It's about the passion behind it. Um, I can make a dollar off of every box and I would be completely happy if, if you guys are all happy because that's that's so much more important to me than being rich and, you know, flaunting your money and yeah. this and that, like what it is about. For yeah. Me. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of the artists who are overshadowed because there's also other artists who do do it for the money and do do it for the exposure. When there's artists um, like you who are just trying to, you know, do it for the fans, do it for the community, do it because they actually genuinely love creating. It's the same with YouTube, you know. Um, I, I do YouTube for, you know, to give updates and give the community something. And I don't do it for the numbers. I do it because I love filmmaking. I love talking with these boys right here. So, you know. <laughs> You know, uh, money is like the second side of things. It's nice that it's there, but really the important thing is doing it if you love it. So, and I can see how passionate you are uh, about it. And when, so, do you know when exactly that the next box is going to be up for sale? So the, every box will go on sale on the 31st of every month. So cool. the, the first box is actually going to get shipped the week before that. So you'll get probably the box in the mail like probably on the 31st if if not a little bit before that and then the theme will be revealed um the day before so on the 30th theme will be revealed and then it'll be open for purchase on the 31st so those of us who have a subscription already some of you bought like three month subscription some of them bought a six month subscription which is insane to me um <laughs> They don't have to worry about that. It just automatically renews. Um, so they just kind of have to wait for the box. But those people who buy, so we have two options. So you can do like a month to month where you buy the first month and then it just like auto renews, or you can purchase ahead of time and you save a lot more money that way. Or you can purchase a uh, single boxes on their own and you don't have to have the burden of like having to pay a monthly fee. So maybe one particular box is not your vibe, then you would just wait for that next month and then just purchase the single box. But the number of those boxes are very, very limited. Um, We're trying to focus more on the subscriptions um, instead of the singles. So if you're trying to get a single, that would be something that you would have to grab like immediately. Right away. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, well, more information will come out on that um, from David's accounts, which you can find all below in the description. Uh, once the the new box goes out and once they're all getting shipped if you purchase this and like I said I'll have a full video on my channel as well so you guys so it encourages you guys to to purchase these boxes but um, moving into the merch because the box is one thing the the amount of merch that you have and the insane designs that you have it is phenomenal so Losh tell us a little bit about what David's doing with his merch everything exactly amazing. <laughs> it's freaking amazing <laughs> I feel like every other week I see a new design. And I'm just like, this is this is so nice. And then there's another one. I'm like, this is even better. 
and like it just gets better every week <laughs> like this is just like the slaughter i think the slaughter cinema line oh like, yeah like hands down that or you know the horror nights unscripted but that's, oh yeah 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 that did it yeah but definitely the slaughter cinema line is beautiful i really like how you're coming out with collections and stuff it's mm-hmm. It's cool that you release collections instead of just... I mean, you do release like some single designs, but I like the collections. And I didn't, I didn't even walk through Slaughter Cinema. I just like watched it on YouTube, and I'm just like, wow, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, I've I thought about I, purchasing so many of those different designs. I know. I like... absolutely <laughs> love every single one of them. It reminds me so much of the house. Absolutely love that house. One of my favorite houses from that year. So, like, as, as Michael was saying, the, the Slaughter Cinema line is, is badass. But uh, you first started off with the the Icon merch, like the Icon mask uh, with the Icon face. I want to know your thought process between all these merch designs. Like, what's your process when you make these designs? Um. So, I mean, for things like that, obviously, you go to, like, the most popular thing that you can think of. Um, I mean, after all, it is a business, so you have to make sure it's something that's going to be sellable. Um, I actually uh, designed the mask for myself, actually being kind of selfish, um, because I knew I was going to the event, and I assumed that we would have to wear masks. I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just make something cool for the event to have. And then I kind of created it, and I was like, whoa, this is this is kind of cool. Like, I have something here, you know? So I decided to um, develop a whole line of them, um, and then magically to public just fell on my lap and they started developing masks literally when I started um, making masks is when they started making masks so um, it just kind of worked out but um, yeah I mean I it's just based on inspiration I kind of like scour through Twitter and Instagram and see what people are talking about what was their favorite houses from years past and kind of use that to um, gain inspiration for the designs. How long does it take you to make a design like say like like uh the Hornets and scripted logo? How long did it take you? Oh, uh, I want to say that took me like maybe like forty five minutes. Really? Yeah. Wow. I th- when it <laughs> when I'm when I'm inspired by something, it goes much faster. Cause we we kind of had a conversation and. You were like, I don't know what to do with this, and I was like, Oh, I think I have something. And then yeah, I yeah, I remember. Something. Like, you just randomly were like, actually, I got something. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, furiously drawing, and then yeah, so I draw uh, a lot of the designs. They start on just like a regular piece of paper, and it starts as a sketch. Then I um, line it with permanent markers and fine liners and things like that into the computer, and then I color in the computer. Put all the nice detail and everything to it. Mm-hmm. Well then, I guess I'd say okay. Your your, um, the Terra Viewcon one. How long did that take? Uh, that was that was pretty up there. I think that was like a couple hours. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. See, that one was more complex. Yeah. I, ours is complex. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least coming from me, I I don't know how to do that stuff. So that, to me, that's complex. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the longest one was probably the Holidays in Hell because there's so many characters in. Oh there. my god, that one is detailed. That was a really nice design too. Yeah, that yeah. one was definitely one of my favorites. It took me a long time, but it was a, a labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> it never went through that house, but honestly, it felt like I was, felt like I had been there that my entire life. Because after seeing that T-shirt, I was, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, that is so cool!" And literally makes me feel like I had, I've been through this house, even though I haven't. <laughs> Because yeah, there's so many like memorable characters in it, and I think from the scare zone too, it's just there's just so many memorable characters, especially the Turkey Man. Turkey Man was the best. Turkey, turkey right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I-, I bought the Pandora's box shirt, which it should be coming in a couple of days. Um, so I'm happy, I'm excited to see that because I do like Pandora's box, the design, and the maze. I still think that the maze was underrated. <laughs> you went through it, right, David? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think it's underrated. <laughs> I just think in black light mazes in general, people don't realize how much effort that takes to create, you know, because you're basically creating like two mazes in one. Um, so it's just like, it's so much work. To well, because I feel like it. both me and you can speak on this. Is, is, it seems like whenever Hollywood gets a, a, a UV black light maze or like a 3D maze, automatically their fans are quick to jump to the Oh, reuse sets, reuse props, but yeah, just because it's the same color doesn't mean it's the same prop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Well, no, and I, I think the average consumer doesn't realize how much work it really takes to paint, like as a scenic designer, like the, like, for instance, like the us facade, that is hand painted. That's not like a printed oh, sign. That wasn't just like a, a template that went over. <laughs> yeah, no. And I don't, I really don't think people realize like how much work and detail goes into that, you know? So I think me um, liking to draw and stuff like that, it, I have a further appreciation for it than mm -hmm. most people. So, you know, like I'm obviously getting scared, but I'm also just like, whoa. Look it's at like the holidays stuff. in hell facade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I could see you doing one of those. I, I could see you doing the holidays in hell because uh, I don't know if you guys saw Michael and Losh, but our transition scenes were like cool, like art pieces that Murdy let one of his art designers do. And like a lot of those pieces remind me exactly of what you do, David. So yeah. I could see I could see you doing something like that. I think that'd be cool. Hey, one day, maybe one day. <laughs> but you do have a good career with Fright Fest, right? Yeah, so actually I... I retired i guess you can say i don't mm -hmm. know but um i've been working as a makeup artist um for six flags fright fest in northern california for over 10 years i've been the make damn so yeah i've been there for <laughs> 10 plus years uh being a makeup lead uh also i've kind of been a part of every aspect of the haunt so i think that's also why i have a further appreciation for haunts i was a character before at fright fest i was a uh, ops person before I was a host before um, walk yeah, around whole career with them. So, yeah. So definitely I've, you know, I've seen every aspect. So I, I understand how much it takes to obviously six flags is not as big of a monster as universal is, but you know, generally they're the same. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I know how much it, how much work it takes. So I really appreciate it. Yeah. Honestly, it surprises me how like, how much they get done in such a short period of time when it comes yeah. to like building all those mazes and everything. Oh, yeah. Like the fact that Universal Orlando has 10 houses and they get all of that done, like completely designed. With all the detail and everything. With all the detail that they have in one year is amazing. And then they managed to do the tribute store and the scare zones and everything else. <laughs> like it blows my mind that, that like, I don't even know how big that team is, but it, like, for me to even fathom how like how like quickly they can put that stuff up, they, that team must be huge. Well, especially with like Hollywood, you know, like Murdy has a team, but he's the he's the main designer designing every single maze. He doesn't have multiple designers. He's he's like the main dude, and I I don't know how he just like goes through all the eight mazes every single day and's like, okay, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, and then like doesn't lose track of what he was saying before. Mm hmm. It's just mind blowing. I wouldn't be able to do it. He's got a gift, yeah. man. He's got a gift. <laughs> He's got a black wall gift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god. <laughs> the black wall joke coming. Yeah, we I, I there'll always be black wall jokes. But, you know, except for in Creep Show we had a white walls, so <laughs> uh, does does the does your career with Six Flags as a makeup artist help you with your designs? um i mean like what do you in what way do you mean? creative wise like does it like do, do were you going off a template when doing makeup or were you just doing it off scratch so as a makeup lead you have to be the one to create the template oh, okay so, um, yeah so i like i said like before like kind of with the boxes there when i'm um, asking artists to contribute to the boxes it's very similar so my boss will come to me and say okay this is the theme for this year um we need so-and-so characters we need a lead character we need sub characters um this is kind of like the lighting that we're thinking of um we want to make sure that they're getting out as fast as possible what can you do so um yeah, I think it's it's definitely helped me think faster on my feet, which is I which is why I think I can conceptualize fast in terms of designing. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of I'm used to like moving quickly. So, yeah, I I think that's cool. I mean, it seems like you got a good lengthy career, and you got this uh, a side gig going on right now too uh, with the merch designs and the and the box, and it's just cool to see how your craft 
is it, it's like your dream you know you're, you're you're being able to do this almost as a job and you know it's well, i'm sure what your your uh your favorite thing to do is, is create <laughs> So oh, definitely. It is really cool to see, especially coming from you just got into like the YouTube game and everything this year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's cool to see how fast you've grown and, and see how you, your marketing tactics are smart. Like when you asked about um, the PR packaging, you sent out a bunch of PR packages to everybody. That was a really smart marketing move. I, I, so I think you're doing really good. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, aside from... Uh, uh, the the merch and everything like I said you guys can check out everything down below in the description we're all Horror Nights fans all of us are diehard Horror Nights fans so we have a couple updates to talk about right now Losh why don't you tell us about those updates so um, there's a little thing called the Tribute Store right a little just, thing not, a not little something thing. big if you guys <laughs> haven't heard of it I'm, I don't know if you guys listening have heard of the Tribute Store it's a store that's tributing to Horror Nights it's where Katniss Everdeen's at Oh, I haven't seen her. I've gone in there a lot. (laughs) But they've added some very peculiar merch into this said shop. Like a Creepshow Funko Pop. And then a Purge Funko Pop as well. And then a Silence of the Lambs Funko Pop. So what do you think about that? Anyone? (laughs) <laughs> I, only, I only knew about the creep one. I didn't know about the purge or the signs of the lamb. So, um, really, it, it came up like a little bit after. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's in like the the glass bins. Interesting. Yeah. And like I said on the on the first Horror Nights Unscripted, I predicted that there could be a Silence of the Lambs house. I saw you, Michael, talking. So I'll let you. I'll let you do it before I dive into it. I mean. It was kind of rumored that Creepshow was going to be there, but when they brought out, like, the Purge pop figures and the Silence of the Lambs pop figures, everyone was like, wait, wait just a minute. I'm so confused if, on the Purge. Because if, if Creepshow as a pop figure is going to be there, and that was already supposed to be at the event, does that mean that these two are also going to be there? <laughs> I mean, I mean could've, we could have got a scare zone. Like, we could have had a Purge scare zone. I they could have I mean, Maybe if you look like, at it, or they could have done a Blumhouse scare zone in a way. No, see, Wash has been yeah. rumoring this Blumhouse shit. <laughs> no, why not? Why I, not? I, I, keep, I keep saying Blumhouse presents Halloween 2018. Come on. Uh, that could have also been a part of it, too. And they could have had a Blumhouse themed set. I don't know. We're just like a best of IPs for like the past couple of years. Best of Blumhouse. There you go. That's what you get. <laughs> no. What? what the, no. What's it's only it gonna, been two years. What's it gonna be? Unfriended and truth or dare? Oh, uh, this isn't Hollywood. Um, <laughs> no, no. You okay? Talk to me okay. when you can have some other properties than the Purge. Um, we had Sinister once. Um, we had Sinister. Tell us when you can come up with another scare zone other than Toxic Six 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 Tunnel. Well, hey, don't hate. Don't hey, hate. No, yeah. They have some nice designs there, though. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a great scare zone, but like, well, when, when all we have, when all we have is axe. a tunnel and have nothing else to design it around, you can't do anything. Here, I say this almost every time. I'm going to talk to Murdy real quick. Hey, Murdy, uh, check out any episode of um, Horror Nights Unscripted. Uh, give us Sweet Licks versus Hollywood Harry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't that do that, Murdy. I don't want Lost to feel good about it. <laughs> Give us Sweet Licks versus Beetlejuice. Oh, <laughs> just two clowns. Beetlejuice versus Jack. I know, like there your merch go. design. That'd be, that'd be, design. That'd be cool. There it is. <laughs> no, oh, you know, I just thought of you know, what if that was one of the theme shows, Beetlejuice and Jack? I don't know how IPs would work out because like the contracts and everything, but what if they got a show? With Beetlejuice and Jack in it. That'd be badass. Yeah. Just saying. It could work. For next year, at least. And I, I know a lot of people are saying, like, they're saying HHN30 is postponed and not canceled. And um, for those of you guys that were asking me about it last episode, we weren't trying to say that Horror Nights 30 was canceled. We were just trying to say it was postponed. But in the moment, you know, it's just automatically in our heads, HHN30 is canceled. When it's not... HHN 30 will be coming, just not this year. So, yeah. saw a couple of people talking about that. Um, yeah, I just want to clear the air on that. <laughs> HHN 30 is not canceled. But also, 
HHN30 is Orlando, not Hollywood. Just know that too. <laughs> I don't know how many years. I think we're like 20 something, 20 something years. I don't know how many years it's been for Hollywood. Yeah. Wasn't it like 07 or 06 or something like that? 06, yeah. When they came back. I've never missed a single year of Hollywood. I've really? Been since the very beginning. So you went to 1990s? No, I'm talking about like. <laughs> It means like after the, the, the restart, yeah. The, the reboot, the Murdy, the Murdy era. The Murdy yeah, era. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm I'm, all, I'm almost there. I guess I'm like four years short. I think, so, which I missed out on a good four years, but it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but going back to that tribute store thing, I I like I said in Horror Nights Unscripted episode one, you guys can check it out. Is Horror Nightmares, Horror Night Nightmares use like the Silence of the Lambs font in their unknown maze yeah. for Hollywood? And I was like, well, that's the exact font for Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. So it's kind of con- it's like interesting, you know. Mm-hmm. But what what character was the Funko Pop? Was it Hannibal? Yeah, it was Hannibal Lecter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which from what from at least for Hollywood, I haven't seen a Hannibal Lecter font because you know sometimes they have different monster pops in there. Um, just just year round, and I haven't seen a Hannibal one. I've never seen a Hannibal pop at Universal. At it's all. just I've really weird that they pop. pick it to put there. Yeah, seems oddly specific. I think the Purge was just they're trying to get rid of stock, but I think for sure that the Creep and the the Hannibal is. Uh, you know what it could have been like real talk. It could have been like a sequel to the All Night Dying Scare Zone, where we had horror like mm-hmm. icon, not horror like horror movies. Like from the past to present time, time. exactly. But it could have been like the '90s and then the 2000s instead of the black and white films and the modern day horror. Okay, you know? I I'm picking up what you're putting down, Losh. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> I I don't know that it's it is interesting to see how much Horror Nights is releasing right now, at least Orlando, in regards to next year. And I do think that we're gonna get a secret room very soon uh and i don't think that it's going to be beetlejuice i think it's going to be an original again probably i don't know i i want to say pumpkin lord is the secret room even though like the icon room kind of looks like pumpkins already i think they actually i think the second room was pumpkin lord Mm -hmm. and they added the icons into the room after that was oh okay i thought um, because I, I talked about before, but, um, so the carnival setting in 25 was actually the same place where the pumpkin Lord was conceived. He was actually supposed to be icon for 26 instead of chance. Um, but they went in a different direction. So it totally makes sense that that would look like that. So I'm assuming the start of the house or you didn't hear that for me, it yeah. would be, <laughs> um, <laughs> would probably be the carnival setting and then it would like segue into this whole like pumpkin underworld type thing so. i could have definitely seen us going into dr F- dr oddfellow's carnival yeah like, that's definitely what i was thinking we were going to walk into in one of the houses this year so it's like mm-hmm. it makes so much sense if it would have been pumpkin lord that had that i mean we know cool. we know for a fact we're getting pumpkin lord next year hopefully they came out with the the pin right there's a pin or is there a shirt uh, I think it's a magnet. There's a magnet and a shirt. Oh, the magnet, yeah. So Pumpkin Lord's on the magnet. He's on the shirt. But a lot of people are saying that's a Scare Zone shirt. Yeah, it because is, the, the tag said, uh, like, HHN30SZ. Oh, okay, okay. Scare Zone shirt, yeah. So, Fun fact, if you guys spend, if you guys go into the shop and there's a shirt that's sold out, you can purchase it if you spend more than $50 in the shop. You can get it shipped to your house. Oh. oh! I found that out when I spent way too much money on the pins. So here's the thing, right? <laughs> is We kind of know what's coming to the event next year, like officially for Scare Zones at least, because why would they still release that merch with the 30th anniversary like stuff on it and everything if they weren't going to bring it next year for the Scare Zones at least? So, I mean, I'd say that it's safe to say those are the Scare Zones which would be something themed to Meaty Meats, uh, Vamp, uh, Pumpkin Lord. Yeah, both. That's the the deadliest. Yeah, what? Yeah, I don't. I that wasn't, that wasn't I the did best. Well, re- that wasn't like the most well received scare zone. So I'm I don't understand why they bring shirt. it back. <clears throat> I'm just happy they put Bone on a shirt because he wasn't on a shirt ever. 
So I believe that's like the creatives, like they love him, so they're like, we we want to represent. They're him like, we don't care what anyone else thinks. <laughs> yeah, like that's why they put on the shirt for like a tip of the hat to Aiello. Yeah, that's Aiello's character. Yeah. Wait, so who's the the featured character? Is that the Tooth Fairy? I I think so because. Who Wait, else could that, be? that one said People... like a question mark, right? Or what? Like. It wasn't his hidden, and then it doesn't have like a name. It just has like, like you a can't see. Of... I don't know if it'll. People show, were but... thinking it was like a yeah. weird like version of the creep, but I don't think no, so. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, special yeah. guest. We're saying it kind of looked like the creep, but that's what I thought right away. But when I saw it in person, it looks nothing like. Maybe that yeah. is like a demented tooth fairy, because I like the I I like how they designed the pumpkin lord. I think that's a really cool design. Could be. I mean, Although it doesn't really remind me of the like description for Nathaniel Crow like we originally got. Yeah, I mean, it could not be Nathaniel Crow. He could have a totally different name. It's him. Yeah, you're right, Crow and Nathaniel. Or use any other. <laughs> it's Nathaniel C R O with no E. Nathaniel Crow. No, but like, <laughs> like, like David brought up to me, like, oh. it, like seeing just the tribute store, like you can, it's it's Nathaniel Crow. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. So what do you guys think the third room is going to be? See, I'm still I'm still on the train that it's going to be Beetlejuice. I think they're just waiting to get the clearance for that IP. You know, I, you know, I I I got I got to be side with Michael here. I I have to, I think we're getting I, an early I'm going to differentiate with both of you I guys think... and I'm going to say it's a socially distant meet and greet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with who? All like the icons? With an icon, they can just rotate it. They're going to do Barney in there. Huh? You have to, like, stand around the room, like the us house at the end, you know? Exactly, just stand there, and that's how you meet the character. It stands in the middle. Yeah, no, Everyone, I'm, with your party. I'm telling <laughs> you, they're just waiting for that contract to get cleared. And I think so, like, too. Boom, I, open it up. Yeah, because why so. wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Because they can like... save it for when it's actually going to be at the event next yeah. year. Well, and I think that's why they haven't opened the third room, because they're scrambling to come up with another concept to fill that space. Because they that would be, like, a huge spoiler, you know? Either that, or if there's a fourth room, like that was rumored, they're trying to move everything, like switch it, you know? Yeah. I think, though, I, I, I gotta agree with Michael here. I think that we're gonna get an early announcement. I really do. I mean, that would be great, but... I know it's kind of a far-fetched thing, <laughs> but... I... I'm just I'm just gonna leave it at that. I think that we're I think that we're gonna have a Beetlejuice announcement. I know I know you guys will disagree, but I just I think we will. You gotta give the fans something other than the tribute store, other than cool. wasting your money and not having any oh, clue. Man. Hey, you're not wasting your money. You're giving them your love. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Show theme <laughs> parks love right now, especially right now, because you don't want these parks to close. Yeah. So go out there and buy the merch. Go have fun. Spend a whole day at a theme park. Wear a mask. And be nice to team members. Yes. <laughs> so I'm actually speaking about Beetlejuice. Gonna don't don't give me any hate. Just recently saw the movie for the first oh. time the other day. Damn. And I'm I'm now off even show. more excited. <laughs> I'm now even more excited for it to come to the event. I wasn't as excited, but now that I've actually seen the movie, I'm like At least you know who Yeah, was. they could do really well at this <laughs> with this. You do so many good things with this. Uh, last minute thoughts, David, before we wrap it up. Uh, yeah, it's it's not Beetlejuice. That's my last thought. <laughs> uh, uh, I I could see like I, if it's a Beetlejuice room, I could see it, like a giant display of him like kind of coming out of the house in the final scene as like the carnival, and then like the sand the sand worms like and on the side. The whole yeah. Room, yeah. I, I could see that. That would be so. That would be such a big scene. Right now, but... Or we can actually get a carnival room in general. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. Extent, just take Beetlejuice out of it. Like <laughs> the room. Who knows? All we'll tell once Orlando speaks, and in Hollywood, we will get nothing. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> oh wait! Speaking of Orlando, the the buy a day get the rest of the year for free ticket for the it theme park. Came out. Yeah. Oh yeah, isn't it like hundred and fifty dollars? Like hundred and fifty dollars. You buy a day and get the rest of the year for free. They're trying to cater to locals more than tourists. Mm -hmm. So I'm so confused. To... Yeah, for real. Look it up. It's on the website. I'm I'm gonna do that after we finish this. Okay, okay, if okay. you okay. buy <laughs> if you buy a a ticket, you get the rest of the year free for like hundred and fifty dollars plus tax. If you're a Florida resident. 
It's really cool. Yeah. I hope that when we open up our theme parks that they cater to uh, locals here too. So that'd be cool. What's the difference between that and an annual pass? It's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. But and because it's a deal, bay, so you feel special. I need that Volcano Bay, though. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, that has been Hornets and Scripted episode 17. We got a couple of big ones coming up very soon. And very soon you'll see all of us together. Um, David, I'm sure eventually it will come down here to Universal once uh, they open up. And as you guys know, I'll be in Orlando in October with my boys Michael and Losh filming that that good vlogs and everything. So, uh, David, where, where quickly, where can they find you on everything? Uh, so many versions, sorry. So <laughs> on uh, Instagram, it's underscore HHN updates. On Twitter, it's updates HHN. And then tpublic.com slash, there's so many slashes. I will just let you put that in the description. Link in the description. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Everything will be linked in the description. That is your key to everything, everybody, is everyone click the link in the description. But as for today's episode, my name is Scott from SoCal Exploring. I'm Michael from Hallowed Thrills. And I'm Adrian from Lost TV. Oh, Go me. on, David. <laughs> and I'm David. <laughs> <laughs> and he's David. <laughs> we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody, and all that good stuff. Peace. Stay safe. <laughs>